Emma, welcome back. Thank you very much. Now, last week we had a great conversation about catastrophizing. Yes. Very, very good. So we started there. If you haven't had a listen to episode one yet, make sure you go back and have a listen to that. There's some awesome steps and some takeaways on catastrophizing. But today we are talking about shoulding and musting. Correct. Now, what? where do we start here? So we all use the words should and must in our everyday language and for a lot of the time, that's perfectly reasonable. So if we were to say, uh, I shouldn't drink and drive, we'd be like, yeah, that's probably fairly sensible. Or I should get this piece of work in uh, by the deadline. Yep, perfectly reasonable. However, sometimes when we use the words should and must, we can use them in a way that creates a lot of pressure on us and uh, puts some unreasonable demands on us as well. So to give you an example of that, uh, it could be something along the lines of, uh, I should go to the gym every day. I was about to say that's my example. <laughs> like that, I'm sorry. This, this is so like relevant for me right now. Yeah. Like I, yeah. Yeah. And so how do you feel then when you miss a day of Terrible. the gym? You feel like a piece of shit, mm-hmm. uh, for lack of a better expression. But that is, yeah, how you feel because even at the moment, I'm sort of just already reflecting on um, myself at the moment. It's like, young dad, working a lot, so much on my plate. And then I go, but I need to be in the best physical, you know, of my life. I need to be working the yep. best. I need to be the best dad I am. And then I end up just sucking at sort of all three instead of just going, you know, what's really important. It's actually yeah. just be at home and be really, pre- really uh, present present yep. at work when I am at work. Um, yes. Sometimes it's really hard to be out doing everything all at once. So the shooting and musting is, is coming a good time. Yeah, good. (laughs) That's good. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, So with the shoulding and musting, we create these shoulds really unconsciously, I would say. It's not like we notice we're doing them most of the time. So it's just kind of that uh, I should be going to the gym every day. Uh, I should be making sure my kid has three amazingly healthy meals every Mm. day. Uh, All of these types of things that just... Um, sometimes can be potentially a little bit unreasonable almost with the amount of pressure they place on us. Yes, I uh, I hear. I hear on this. Shooting and musting, it's one of those things as well. As you just said then, you don't really realise you're actually doing it until you reflect on it. Yeah, I think when we think in this way, and you kind of hinted at it before, it means that we're then not 100% present in what we're actually doing. Yeah. So we're taken away and then we're in our own mind and we're like, oh God, I should be home. It's six o'clock now, I shouldn't be in the office anymore, I should be home, you know, I'm not being the best dad I can be, Um, you know, this isn't good enough. And then we're even later getting home because we're distracted and pulled in different directions. Yeah. Million dollar question, as we do here, we don't just give problems, we give solutions. (laughs) You you heard of um, Pitbull before, the rapper? Yeah, (laughs) Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Worldwide, (laughs) yes. yes. So one of his um, famous quotes is, no problems, only solutions. Okay. I've yes. adapted that for myself and this series. Good. I like so it. So not just not just the problem, we have the solutions. Yeah. How do we fix it? Yeah. So it's a couple of different things you can do. You can uh, try and alter your language a little bit. So mm. I've had uh, in my private work a few clients who get really stuck on the shoulds. And in the beginning, it's like they don't even realise again that that's what they're doing until the attention is drawn to it. And so step one, again, a bit like with our catastrophizing, is really recognising the shoulds. So once we know that we're actually using a lot of these shoulds in our in our language, then we can learn to do something with them. So that, that'll be our first step. Uh, and then you can... You can do a couple of different things. So one thing you can do is change the word should. So try and remove Mm -hmm. should almost from your vocabulary. Uh, I uh, had one colleague who actually just gets her clients to change it to shh, like shh, mind, because it's not a helpful thought. It's taking me down an unhelpful path. I end up feeling guilty and crappy and no good. So um, she just suggests you change the should to a shh and then kind of try and redirect back into what you're doing. Uh, one that I also like is you can change your should to a could or a would like to. And I think that's quite powerful because when you're at work and it's 6 p.m. and you're going, oh, I should be home with my kid, it can be, well, I'm at work at 6 p.m. I really would like to be home with my kid, but there's a reason why I'm not. Yeah. Um, and it, it opens up the door, I think, to explain 
you know, why you're in the position and, and cut yourself a bit of slack. I really love this. I'm a massive believer in language and I don't know if this is um, scientifically true or, yep. or medically true at all, but I do believe that um, myself, that our brains or our our minds can't actually tell the difference of when we're being sarcastic and when we're being serious. So by, you know, being um, in those situations saying, I would like to be home instead of, I should be home. Yeah. We're actually just bringing that guilt on ourselves straight away, feeling terrible about it versus like, you know, I really would like to be doing this, but I can't at the moment and I'll be there. And you sort of, sort of I don't know, you just reframe it and make yeah. you feel a lot better about it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and that's exactly the idea. So just a little reframe there. And it's quite simple. Uh, so you you got to catch it, obviously. So you notice you've done the should and then you can, yeah, change it up to I would like to. Or um, could be works okay as well. So for the gym, for example, I should go to the gym every day. Um, it's, I could go to the gym every day. And then it gives you opportunity to expand. So you yeah. can be, but actually that's not realistic for me. And maybe going to the gym every day, um, you know, actually not having a rest day isn't that good for you anyway. Yeah. It sort of actually reminds me back in, in the footy days of smart goals. Yeah. Like if you set your goals to, there's those stretch goals and then there's smart goals. Yep. And it's like stretch goals is obviously something that you really want to do. It's like, you know, I want to be the strongest I can be. I want to go to the gym every day. That's a stretch goal. It doesn't mean you have to do it right away. Yes. Versus a smart goal being like, look, let's go to the gym once a week. You tick that off. You feel good about yourself because mm-hmm. it's once a week. And then if you get any more, you're even, it's a bonus. Like how good's that? Yeah. Um, so I've tried to adapt that a little bit. Again, it is hard. It's more just catching yourself out in the moment, re- redirecting, like you said before, of where we come back to. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, no, I think that's a really nice way to look at it. And so if you're noticing it's kind of coming up in these consistent themes around, you know, exercise or um, parenting, whatever it might be, uh, or you're, you're eating even, you can be like, okay, I know that I keep getting stuck on this and I'm noticing these shoulds. Let's have a think about what are some more realistic goals I can set that are actually achievable You know, we're not going for perfection because Mm. it's not possible, especially, you know, when you do have competing demands. So Mm. let's look at what can I realistically achieve and then set that as my goal. Uh, So then the should kind of of that's set way too high is melting away. Love it. Takeaways for this episode then on shooting and musting is recognise. Yep. Similar to catastrophizing, it seems like a big theme might be coming through with a lot of our thinking traps (laughs) and this series I could be onto it. (laughs) Um, is recognising we're yes. doing it, um, the first one, and then removing should with sh. Yes. I like that. Um, and then obviously being able to redirect that back in. So, again, it, it first step is the recognising, then yep. being able to redirect once we have into a more productive thought pattern. Yep, 100%. You've nailed it. Is it easy to become like, do you, like to become psychologist? Or do you just like, I only spent do you start, like, I only spent nine years at university. Oh, really? seems, that's seems like a lot of time. <laughs> I, I feel like I've nailed it in these two sessions. It seems so easy. Yeah, you're you're nearly ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, at the end of this thinking traps, so I might be taking on my own clients. Oh, don't worry, I've got enough of my own problems. I need to work out, so don't worry about that. Um, is the shooting and musting a, a personal thing, or is it actually something that we can project on other people with our own? thought patterns we might not be realising is actually quite detrimental on them? Yeah, good question. And uh, it definitely is something that can be directed towards other people as well. And there's a, a couple of the thinking traps where that's the case. So this is one of them. So as we talked about, we're often having those thoughts around, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. But also we can be having thoughts that are, again, pretty automatic towards others, usually uh, you know, significant others, sometimes can be colleagues as well, around you should you should be doing this. Um, so it should be. It could be something like, oh, uh, you should be eating healthier. Uh, it can also be shouldn't, same, same. So, yep. oh, you shouldn't be eating that. Um, and you can hear kind of the judgmental mm. <laughs> tone that can come along with that as well. So it can be another habit we kind of get into as well, just this should aimed at other people, uh, which can be damaging obviously to relationships as well. Definitely. I think one that actually probably even hits – uh, both people without knowing is when you're like internally thinking it, not even saying it, and you're probably just trying to presume what someone else is doing. Like, oh, they should be yeah. over here. Like, you know, I, I spoke to them about this bit of work. Why are they not doing it? Darcy's looking at me now thinking that I'm talking about him. But <laughs> the in, in general, like, you know, you, you in, internalise other people's things and instead of just having a conversation and, as you said, calling it out in your own mind, you can fall down your own trap about someone else that then actually turns to affect you. 
Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so it's, again, I suppose about trying to be aware of that. Uh, if you're noticing that you're feeling a little bit annoyed at someone or, um, you know, irritated, often that's a bit of a sign to check in again with your thinking, you know, what am I thinking? And am I making, again, is this a, is this a helpful or an accurate thought? Um, am I being a little bit judgmental here? Am I taking in the whole picture? Uh, do I know this person's whole situation? Uh yeah, that can be helpful. This one was a big one for me in, in um, footy. Yeah. When I was playing, it was like all I would do is just think about the coach and be like, come on, man, like you said this, like you you, sh- you said that if someone did this, they'd be picking. Like this is just all internally yeah. in my head. Like you should be doing this, you should be doing that, you can't do this. And then I just come up with all these narratives like in my own head about yep. what they should and shouldn't be doing yep. and what they must yeah. But in, instead, I should have just gone and had a conversation with them. And when you do, you always feel so much better anyway. Yeah, 100%. I think it's really useful to, yeah, again, take it from being so internal to trying to externalise it a bit. So whether that's kind of just thinking through it yourself, talking through it yourself, um, or going, wait a minute, should I just be going, should, there's a should, probably a helpful one. Should I just be going to have uh, a conversation with this person instead to clear it up or, you know, explain what I've noticed and, you know, what's kind of going on for me and how I'm feeling about it and just check in and find out the actual information. Um, Thanks so much, Emma. We uh, have absolutely nailed that one. And uh, next episode, we will be talking about jumping to conclusions. Oh, yes. One of my favourite hobbies to do. (laughs) It's It's a really good one that I enjoy. So, again... Really relevant for me at the moment. I'm hoping everyone else is learning from this. But if you enjoyed that episode, make sure you give us a rate and review. Also head to the Tackle Your Feelings Instagram page at tyf underscore au. And also check out the website tacklyourfeelings.org.au to book your club into a workshop. We'll see you next week where we're talking about jumping to conclusions. Conclusions.